it is a pleasure to be talking with you today. Um, I know that you have a busy schedule and everything going with this new single popping off, which we'll get into in a bit. But um, one thing that I wanted to just kind of start this off with is I rarely get to speak with an artist that's so new in the game, but also just so on fire. And so uh, from your perspective, in the in just the past two years of the success that you've had, what is one of the biggest things that you've learned um, and the industry has taught you from as an artist or just um, just from a business perspective overall? Um, the most important tools that the creative needs in, in, in the mainstream world is um, consistency and efficiency. And um, I've been able to to hold those tools close to me and, you know, utilize them for as many times as I can, because you're not always going to be given a yes. And um, that shouldn't stop you from keep going. And, you know, that shouldn't stop you from still trying to achieve what you're trying to achieve. So the consistency, the efficiency, um, the originality that comes with your art also means everything. So like, yeah, I think those things literally helped me because if I sound like everybody else, then like, why would why would I be expecting fans to to spend money on my music? So yeah, originality also. But yeah, so and I and I definitely get that. And I feel like you come <laughs> from a region that is it, it you come from a region with artists that are just kind of innovative and, and doing really cool things from style to music to production. And from you and like for you, um, who are some of those artists from the region that you're from that you feel like the American audience should know, like outside of yourself. They should literally just, just, just come to our playlist. There, uh, there's a bunch of playlists, Afrobeats playlists that you know. I'm, I'm, I'm. I want the whole world, not just the American audience, the whole world to get tapped into. Um, the, 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 there are like the usual suspects: the Whiskey, David, Thames. Um, Rema, but we got like more juice in there. We got like CK, nice. we got um, Fireboy, we got um, Omale. All these people, oh. they're holding it down and they've been killing it back to back for the past like four or five years. There's Adi Kule mm -hmm. there's Kiss Daniel, and then there's a bunch of like young, fast rising talents that even uh, they're, they're, they're trying to break into the Nigerian market as well as the global market that you know. It's limitless. Yeah, it's, it's so limitless. The amount of talents that are trying to break through from Nigeria to the world is, is, is humongous. And and you know, all of them have their own sound. They have their own brand. They have what they're they're, they're aiming aiming at. Everybody's hungry and determined. So like, that's why I would rather categorize it as you guys coming to listen to our playlists. And you know, the playlist is like a supermarket of sounds where you can now choose your own favorite. Yeah, and I love how the playlist, like, you'll start with a playlist that might be have 10 songs on it, and it'll just drag you into, like, an even deeper playlist with deep cuts and, and, and B-sides and all sorts of things that, like, you really get, like, acclimated into this culture. So I think it's just so dope what y'all are doing and just bringing that over just and making it global. Um, and one way that y'all are doing that, is particularly you, is... Um, by kind of merging genres. And I feel like your music specifically has been described as Afrofusion. And so for you, like, what is that like being an artist that doesn't have to stick too much into Afrobeat or stick too much into R&B or be expected to just be pop? Like you can kind of be a little bit of all of that. So like how, like, what, how does that feel for you? And how do you keep that? How do you maintain that? I'm trying to be a citizen of the world. So mm. we have to find perfect balance to how we're trying to feed all the audiences. And that's why, firstly, the Afro had to be there. The Afro is like undeniably the bedrock of like whatever it is I'm trying to do. Um, Afro beats is like the mother of all African genres or like African sounds. So like basically I had to pick from the Western world. I had to pick from the techno, the European and everything. And I merged like this cocktail called like Afrofusion. And you know, it's still a work in progress, but I am enjoying the journey. Like what I'm creating, people are accepting it. And it's giving me more confidence to take risks and you know, try new things that wouldn't make sense. 
Yeah. And then for you specifically, like how, what is it like, well, not what is it like, but how are you maintaining and incorporating Nigerian culture specifically in your musician, in your music and just your artistry overall? Um, firstly, being a Nigerian is like, if you're a Nigerian, um, your, your, your imprints on your art is inevitable because we carry our culture everywhere on unapologetically. But now I'm looking at it from the African perspective of, you know, I'm much more as, an, as a Nigerian than I am an African. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. so like, I'm even looking at the bigger picture. But still, I, I, love, I love implementing my language, my culture, our melodies, our fashion, our ideologies, the messages we, we're trying to pass across to the, to the world generally, everything makes my music and oxalate who it is. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And so like getting into now where we are now with uh, Kulosa, like you, like it, it amazes me how you had the success with your first single and the virus with that but then to now like this song is doing numbers and it's doing numbers globally and so how does it feel to like have success now where you are now a few songs in and you're having success song after song after song and it's kind of leading you into being like a full well-rounded artist that you know i'm expecting hits now like that so it's like 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 what is that feeling like for you and like how are you maintaining that like i said this is like um, and I'm an experimental phase of my life, and I'm enjoying the journey. Every song adds value to my life in, in any way it can. Not all my songs have this global recognition that m m few songs of mine have, but regardless, like, they also set me up to, like, an, a different mental space, you know, that could lead to another banger. So, like, every song has, like, a long, a long chain that connects them and connects my story and connects every phase I am at while I'm making those music. Get me? So, yeah, man. My, 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 I think, I think my life has been scripted by God, and I'm just, I'm just following, you know, the whole script basically. I love that, and you know, like, you know, as an artist, as any artist, you know, um, there's those things that you, the, the, the successes that came before you, and the ones who inspired. And uh, if you can, if you can think of them off the top of your head, can you give me five albums that made you the musician that you are today? Um, there's Mushin to Mo Hits. Okay. It's, 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 it's by One Day Cole. Um, One Day Cole is a legend in, in, in Nigeria. Um, there's, there's, there's Chronology by Chronix. That's a very solid album. Um, the album literally shaped me, my music, everything I know about the Caribbean sound. You know, I picked it from there. Um, uh, what other album? The Trilla album. Okay. Yeah, my, Michael Jackson. Like you know, he's the he's the Optimus Prime of like pop music, and you know, absolutely, disputedly, like, undoubtedly one of the greatest. Um, I'm trying to put I'm trying to put a Drake album in there because <laughs> to be honest, no, no, I mean like I mean it makes no sense. I I I draw a lot of inspiration from Drake for me not to um not like probably because for me, Views is one of the most legendary albums ever, ever. Like the album so, cover alone. Come on now. <laughs> I mean like I mean like Views did a massive like damage in the, in, in the african scenes and and i have to give him that um lauren hill i listened to a lot of lauren hill and um i think i'll just put um the miseducation of lauren hill i'll put that one right. yeah that that, that's, a, that's, that's a solid list yeah that's definitely a solid list because like that you you got in, in that list really encompasses like you as an artist from that like going back to what I said about that Afro fusion. So like yeah, that that was perfect. Um, and and kind of keeping with that, um, if time, money, and even mortality didn't matter, what's the one art that you would want to do a collab with? MJ. There we go. 
<laughs> and you know what's funny? That's like such a I, 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 that's one of those answers that I expect. It's either Michael Jackson, Tupac, or Aaliyah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I love, I love, like to, I love, love to give Tupac a chorus, probably like Afro beats type chorus. I would love, love to see Tupac on Afro beats because, like, he's one of the emblems. He's one of those, you know, black, pe black person that really took the black race to another light. You know, in terms of using the using the hip hop as a tool, and yeah, definitely, Tupac, give Tupac and Afrobeats will have slapped. Oh, man. even Don't MJ and Tupac. Afrobeats. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to get a DJ set going. Yeah. All right. So, um, the the one of the craziest, one of the most amazing things about it is that you, even in these two years of success you've had, you yet to really drop your debut album. Like these projects you've been dropping have been really fire EPs. Um, so, what is the biggest thing that you want? That or what's something that people can expect from your debut album? Um, and if you can, like tease us when we might be able to expect that. My my uh, my debut album drops the first quarter of um twenty twenty three. There we go. Yeah, um, it's titled Oxlade from Africa. Um, I just have this mindset of you know, be. I mean, my songs are doing very good, thanks to God. But before the the world or the universe um knows, you know, the superstar, I would like them to know where I come from. You know, the genesis. I like them to know where I come from. I like them to know the roots, and um, that's why I named the album Oxley from Africa. Mm -hmm. Um, fourteen track album has my pain sweat emotions happiness you know times life and times of oxlade the insecurity the the whole the whole embodiment of the brand oxlade because it's my it's my debut album so you know i'm trying to give it my all you know and then we'll see how it goes from there i love that i love that i'm definitely gonna be watching every step of the way um and just one final question um what example do you want to set for international artists like yourself, um, you know, we see such a wave of them coming, but over the past couple of years, it's just been an influx. And I feel like you're definitely at the top of that. Um, but what is one example of what, what like, that you want th the ones coming into the game to take from you in terms of how to, you know, break across the pond here in America or just globally? Um, we, we used to be told um, that we had to sing in English before mm. the, the Western world could um could accept us because oh you have to sing what they understand you have to give them the language they can grasp and I feel like I don't believe in that I believe in art itself like just do you I'm not saying you shouldn't add like elements that can make them understand but not at the expense of your art your originality, what you bring to the table is what they're gonna collect. Fella, the great fella, barely sang in, in English, and you know, we've seen people like Jay Z sample him, legendary like Kanye West sample him. We've seen, I've heard fella music in like in 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 countries, in places where I barely see black people. Mm -hmm. so like, yeah, so like you know, I've heard the songs in museums. If you were singing in English, I don't think you'll have that. Hilarious. Yeah, because like every other person was singing in English, but so I decided to sing in his own language. Mm. So my point is, if we're trying to do Afro beats, you know, let's do it proper. Let's keep going. Like you could do some English songs, but what's what what legacy are you trying to what legacy are you trying to put down? You get me, like you know. Are you trying to be that oh that that that, that guy from Africa that sings in English, mm -hmm. but the African giant itself? For example, like Burner Boy, he will give you English, but he would definitely make you know. Oh damn, I'm from Nigeria. Yep. Me. Um, down to the down to the accents, down to the the, the, the lyrics, the choice of words. For example, Kulosa is 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 closer. It's actually mm -hmm. closer, but. I, I pronounced it in the African form, Kulosa, and you know, the world accepted it. If I if I chose Closer, I mean there's a thousand songs with the name Closer. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you get me like I just it just it just still boils down to you sticking to your guts and not getting intimidated by whatever the standards or the rules are.
And that's what I'm doing. I mean, I see everybody dropping what they be dropping, but I, I just decided to go the other way and it's working for me. Absolutely. You know, th th thank you so much for this. That's all I got. I think that you just from our conversation and just my research and just like you're like going into 2023 and beyond, I really do believe that you have a, a, a real strong opportunity to do some really great things in music and especially for Afrobeat and just for your culture in general. So it's just an honor for me to kind of like get that, very much that exclusive early access. So thank you so much for it. This is a great interview. Thank um, you have a great rest of your day. And I'm really excited to see how we like turn this around and make it work. So yeah, love, man. I appreciate your time, man. Maximum respect. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Have a good day, man. You too, my bro.